What's up guys, Sean Alawani, realscienceathletics.com. And I just wanted to do a video today addressing a pretty common question that I get, which is why I don't post videos of my own workouts here on YouTube. And this video isn't just about me, there's also a larger general point that I wanna make here as well. So even if you don't care about the answer to this, um, I'd still recommend watching this video all the way through. So. The really simple answer to the question is that I don't post my own workout footage here because even though I know that it might be uh, entertaining for some of my viewers to see, the truth is that the way I personally train is not the way that I would recommend most of my viewers train because my workouts are customized to me and to my specific situation and I don't want people to see my training footage and then just go and copy what I'm doing since it probably is not applicable to them. And I know that's what happens in a lot of cases for people who subscribe to YouTube fitness content. They have a channel that they follow and trust, they see the workouts and then they just copy those workouts even though it's not really what they should be doing to get the best results. And so not only would a lot of my training footage not serve you in any real way, but it could actually be counterproductive. Um, if you've been following my content for a while, then you know that um, I've actually been doing this whole fitness thing for quite a long time now, okay? I've been training seriously since I was 13 years old. And so where I'm at now with my training 20 years later, um, in terms of my goals, my preferences, injury limitations, and just how I approach the whole bodybuilding and fitness thing in general, is not going to be the same as someone who's in the beginner to intermediate stages, which probably makes up at least 90% of my audience. Okay, first of all, I don't train for maximum size and strength at this point. I did train that way uh, for about 10 years, and I used to walk around anywhere from uh, about 10 to 25 pounds heavier than I am now, and I did wanna be as big and as strong as possible at that time. But naturally over time, the longer you've been doing something, often your preferences and your viewpoints will change. And uh, I just personally don't desire that anymore, okay? I don't wanna have that really bulky appearance and I just genuinely prefer a more middle ground look. I can of course coach others on how to achieve that bodybuilder type of physique if that's their goal, but my personal workouts and my diet aren't set up for that. So that right there already influences my training to some degree because I don't need to train in a way that fully optimizes muscle growth and so I can just base more of my training on personal preference and be a bit more relaxed with things. You know, I still do all the basic movement patterns, I still train hard in the gym, I'm still very consistent overall, you know, don't get me wrong about that, but you know, for example, since I'm not trying to make my quads as big as possible and I'm not a power lifter, barbell back squats just aren't a necessity for me anymore. And so I can pick other movements that I'd rather do and that are easier on my lower back, um, which is an area that has taken a beating over the years. You know, something like a hack squat, for example, or a leg press, those are generally my go-to movements. Whereas for someone else who is wanting to maximize their lower body development and doesn't have any pre-existing injuries, um, in that case, I would say do barbell squats if you're able to. Uh, same thing applies to my weekly training layout. You know, I don't always train with as much volume or as much frequency per muscle group as I might recommend to someone else who wants to maximize muscle growth. Again, because I just don't need to since I'm not trying to maximize muscle growth and so doing a bit less volume, um, I can do that and still maintain the physique I want but also be more time efficient and put less stress on my joints um, since training longevity is a huge thing for me now as I approach my mid thirties. Um, and then on that same note, in terms of injuries, I've also had a pretty significant one now for quite a few years called snapping tricep syndrome, which is basically where the medial head of my triceps snaps back and forth over my elbow joint anytime I flex and extend my triceps. Um, it's not known exactly what causes it and it's only fully correctable through surgery, but basically what it means is that I can't do any heavy free weight pressing for my chest, shoulders, or triceps. So in terms of heavy push workouts, I have to make some really significant modifications and my push workout would not look anything like a typical push workout um, that I used to do or that I would give to someone else who doesn't have this particular injury. Okay, my only uh, compound free weight chest pressing movement is the dumbbell floor press uh, because that particular exercise doesn't cause the snapping because the range of motion is shorter. Uh, for my shoulders, my vertical pushing movement right now are actually handstand push-ups. 
Um, and then for triceps, I can't do any close grip pressing or dips. And so it's basically rope push downs and other cable work. And I can still get the job done with all of that uh, based on my goals. But again, posting a push workout on YouTube just wouldn't make sense because it wouldn't serve anyone unless they also have snapping triceps syndrome like myself. So yeah, that's why for now, I prefer to just stick to straight informational content on YouTube and to coach other people on how to achieve the physique they want. But I don't post my own workouts because I honestly feel like they just might end up misleading people. Um, I do plan to get back into posting training demonstrations in the gym, showing like forum cues and injury prevention tips and things like that. But in terms of my own training footage, um, I do post some shorter workout clips in my Instagram stories, um, just showing some individual lifts. But in terms of full length workouts, that's not something that I bother with uh, for the reasons that I just gave. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this also speaks to a larger point, which is that the points that I just made also apply to other fitness channels as well. And it's important that you don't just blindly follow some workout you see on YouTube or some swipe workout you see on Instagram just because it's from uh, you know someone whose physique you admire. Because that specific workout or that specific set of exercises might very well not be ideal for you. Keep in mind that anyone with an impressive physique who you're following here on YouTube will have already been in the gym for several years, maybe five, 10 or more. And so the way that they're training now as an advanced lifter is almost certainly not gonna be optimal for you if you're still in the first one to three years of training. Not to mention that their workouts are also gonna be customized to them in terms of their goals, preferences, and possible injuries. So the way that you see them training now is probably not the way that they trained in order to build up their initial physique. Now, I'm not saying that it won't work for you or it won't produce results, but there is a decent chance that you'll actually get better gains by doing something else, probably something more basic, um, especially if this is like a typical Instagram workout where they're just performing a bunch of fancy fluff exercises, you know, just to stand out and get more views. Um, and that's another thing I see all the time. Someone in the gym who is obviously a beginner, but they're performing a bunch of like one arm kneeling, twisting cable press types of exercises for their chest instead of just doing a basic uh, barbell press or dumbbell press, or they're doing a bunch of fancy band work for their glutes instead of just doing squats and hip thrusts. And then when you consider that a lot of the top fitness YouTubers and Instagrammers are also enhanced, they're using drugs, and they have great genetics on top of it, trying to mimic their workouts is pretty much totally pointless and almost definitely gonna be counterproductive because those guys uh, will basically just grow no matter how they train and they don't even need to have any real knowledge of exercise science in order to achieve amazing results. So they're out there posting videos of their six day high volume bro split pump routine and some beginning lifter goes ahead and tries that. They try to copy that workout and they end up getting half the results they'd get if they just did a basic full body routine three days a week or an upper lower split four days a week. Now I can recognize that if you're still a novice, then it can be pretty hard to decipher exactly what you should or shouldn't be doing in the gym. But the bottom line is that just because someone out there has an impressive physique and posts their workouts online, doesn't mean that you're gonna get the same results following it. And very often that workout will not be suitable for you. That's why I don't post my own personal workout footage and instead I just focus on giving out the proper information that will be applicable to someone depending on whether they're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced lifter. And that's ideally what you should be looking for, okay? Not people who just blindly say, this is what worked for me and so it'll work for you too, but people who actually take the context into account and give out information with the understanding that each person's situation is gonna be a bit different and that things are not perfectly black and white. If you found this advice helpful and you do wanna learn exactly what I recommend for you based on your individual body type goals and experience level so that you can achieve the very best muscle building and fat burning results in the shortest time, make sure to take my physique quiz over at quiz.seannow.com because that'll hook you up with the proper step-by-step -step training plan as well as the proper nutrition plan for you based on your personal needs. You can click up here for that or use the link in the description box below. On the supplementation side of things, you can also visit realscienceathletics.com to check out my evidence-based, no BS supplements that I personally formulated to help fully optimize your results, including our pre-workout formula, athletes' multivitamin and fish oil. And you can also use coupon code YouTube10 to save 10% off your entire first order. Uh, and as always, guys, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe below if you haven't already in order to stay up to date on future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.